Guys, we are at the Pete store, our local dealer here in Knoxville, which these guys are freaking phenomenal when it comes to, uh, especially our Peterbilt, because the truck, you know, that's where my Peterbilt was bought from, right here. So show them where that green truck's sitting, Rex. So where that green truck is sitting right there, my truck sit there for a year, bought brand new. So Mr. Jenkins, the guy I got my truck from, which he had passed away. When I was Braxton's age, I would go, he would always fill up at the BP there in town. And I got the truck and the matching trailer, which come from this store. Um, that truck, when he'd come in the BP, I would pump his fuel for him and polish the wheels and all that stuff. And he told his wife, um, which she's now passed away too. She passed away like, I don't know, like eight months ago. Um, she drove a truck too. She actually drove my truck. Um, they come up here, but he had told her, you know, if if Tim wants my Peterbilt, I want it to go to him. Um, you know, if he starts driving a truck, you know, he hadn't seen me since I was, you know, a teenager. You know, at the last time I'd seen him in the truck, I was a teenager. Um, so when I went over there to talk to her, she's like, it's so crazy that you're here. She said, cause you, he wanted this Peterbilt to go to you. Um, and for some reason, nobody had bought it. No, you know, nothing had happened with it. And this, when I seen it, I'm like, holy crap, this is not just, you know, I didn't know it had a 16 liter in it. I didn't know it had all this other stuff that was done to it. Um, especially for a 1998 model. So, that's how I acquired the Peterbilt. In 1998, he come up here, and the sales guys up here, you can call up here and talk to them, they'll tell you this story too. Um, he walked in the store, had coveralls on, he just left Kenworth. Kenworth pissed him off because they wouldn't work with him. And he walked in the store wearing coveralls. Um, he had one tooth, so one tooth, coveralls, old straw hat, you can imagine just an old farmer. And he paid cash for that Peterbilt. Well, after he bought it, it sat up here for a whole entire year. And, you know, it would go in and out of the body shop. They'd add a little bit of chrome or this and that. And uh, he left it up here for a whole year. And finally they asked him, he said, Otha, why are you not picking up this truck? Like, what's the deal? You know, it's paid for. Why are you not using it? And he said, well, I don't want the warranty to you know, I don't want the warranty to start on it until I'm ready for it. And they said, well, the warranty's already a year out. And he said, no, it's been sitting up there on the lot for a year. Um, you know, I've not ever drove it off the lot, I've not even drove it. And they, you know, he thought as long as the truck sit on the lot, that the warranty would stay not started. That the, you know, when he was ready to start using the truck, that's when the warranty would start. And uh, when they told him that, he took the truck home that day, and that's when he started using it. Well, up till I bought the truck, all it ever hauled is mail, and the heaviest load it had pulled is 11,000 pounds. And guys, that's a 600 horsepower truck, double framed, 18 speed, 20 series everything. I mean, this is a big heavy haul built truck. It's a monster of a truck. So, but they still talk about that truck to this day inside that dealership. Anytime I walk in there, there's a story we talk about with that truck. And so we just had a really, really good meeting with the Peach store this morning. Tomorrow morning, I fly out to go pick up a special project. I feel like my Pete's a pretty special project. So we've got two big projects coming up. We had a really good meeting with the Peach store this morning. And I think we're gonna start working with them on some stuff, maybe do some videos with them and, uh, and just have some fun, see where it goes. But we have a brand spanking new wiring harness for the peat. Look at that. 1998 model truck, but it's going to be brand new under the hood from top to bottom, wiring the whole nine yards. Um, we're getting ready to paint the front of the cab now and the, and the frame. Uh, but I kind of want to see where this thing with the peat store goes and just, I mean, the YouTube channel is growing. It's turning into something I never imagined it turning into. We are pulling into the junkyard. We're gonna go in here and visit Mr. John Story and uh, see what we can uh, make happen here as well. We've got some stuff we're gonna be doing with him. Because this is a place that we visit like every single week. Either me, dad, one of our guys. A lot of our parts for our trucks come from this place because they take the 
they kind of take the bull crap out of it. You know, stuff that you can't get at a dealership, stuff that's hard to get now, parts that are hard to get. They buy really clean, really, really good trucks and they take everything apart. There's, if, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you can get here at John's Stories. Um, John does a lot of stuff with us on our trucks, on our builds, stuff like that. I'm gonna venture out into some, some more modern stuff and show you guys how easy you can get parts if uh, it's hard to buy a new truck right now. So a lot of guys are rebuilding trucks. Well, what do you do? You go to a place like this to get parts. So me and Brax is gonna walk you guys around and we're looking for a cutoff for the cab over. Um, I've got a Peterbilt low leaf, but I'm wanting a complete nice new cutoff. We're gonna put something more modern underneath that truck. We're gonna put modern axles we're gonna put modern airbags. We're gonna airbag the cab. That cab over, when we get done with it, is gonna be like a 2022 Freightliner cab over. <laughs> so, um, guys, John Story and Son, I'm gonna put the phone number right down here below. Um, don't be scared to reach out to Nate. Nate loves to talk to people. They ship parts. Uh, you can come here and get your own parts. They'll pull parts. Um, they are having, just like anybody else in the world right now, it's, they're having a hard time finding employees. And I will say, if you live in Knoxville and you like to work on trucks and work for good people, John Story and Son is definitely where you want to be. Um, they pay really good. They give you good hours. You don't have to worry about none of that stuff. They've got tools. They've got a good work bay in the back. It's really clean and organized here. It's not working in, at like working at a junkyard. This this place they run it like a fine tooth comb. So, if you are looking for a job, reach out to Nate. Call him here. Um, like I said, the numbers down below. I'm gonna put it in the comments as well. Don't be afraid to reach out to Nate. Talk to him. Talk to John. Um, John's daughter. They run the business now. Um, they do it hand in hand. It's a family ran business. So, I definitely definitely. If I wasn't doing what I was doing today and this job op opened up as an opportunity for me, I would definitely be taking it. But, you know, I can't really, I've kind of got a lot going on, so I can't work here. But maybe part-time, maybe I'll come up here and help out when uh, when I need a little help or something. Uh, this is one of my favorite places to be. This would be a really good one. Peterbilt low leaf. It's already got, it's good. got new airbags and everything. Looks like somebody started rebuilding this truck and they just didn't finish it. Mm. Oh, it's been stretched. Check that out. Look, they did. They put this on the back of this thing. Mm. See, look right here where it's been plated. Yeah, I see it. I'm going to check it out. See where it's been plated? Yeah. Dang, this is actually a pretty nice truck. Let's check this thing out. Freaking Peterbilt. Oh, it ain't got no door. It can't open the door. That's a good way to keep everybody out of your truck. <laughs> Take the door handles off of it. Dang, this thing's pretty nice, actually. Yeah. This would be a nice picture up Even that one over there, too. Oh, this is the roller. Yeah, don't have a motor transmission there. So John reached out to me on this truck. So guys, this truck is actually, I think it's for sale. Um, he sent me pictures of it. This would be a good roller to fix up. Ooh, crap. Yeah, let me see that. So it's a newer model dash. Dang, this thing's got good bone. This would be a nice truck to fix. It's already been stretched. It's got a new style suspension on the back. Hey, you got that one there. Yep. So it's already got new airbags, new brakes, new drums. I don't know what rear ends is in it, but guys, this would be a good one to fix up. I need some fuel tanks, and needs running gear, and needs a motor and transmission, but. So if you're looking for a Peterbilt, this would be a good one. I might even, now that I've seen it in person, I might even talk to him about this one. I already got a visor. It's got some good looking stacks on it. That one was Yeah, oh yeah, this one's had a bad day. That driver had a bad day. Looks like they rolled it. It's got good looking tires on it though. It's just got disc brakes on it. Nope, drum brakes. So guys, I'm really thinking about getting a disc brake cutoff for the cab over. I don't know why I've never ran disc brakes before, but 
definitely something I'm thinking about. Peterbilt, Mississippi. Ooh. Cat and the top of the motor's inside the truck. That's probably not good. Ew. So this one's probably got some motor issues, but this would be a nice fixer upper. Ooh, check out this box, Brax. That's pretty neat. How you hook a trailer to it, though? <laughs> We got T800s, T600s. Right here's a bunch of Kenworths. W900s. I want to look at how this light set up. Ooh, look, here's a drop axle. Dang, Brax, this is the cutoff we need right here. This would be perfect. I mean, we'd have to do some work to it because it is kind of rusty but yeah. Ooh, look at that man this is the kind of cutoff we need yeah, we could do uh it's already got the ramps on it yeah. Ooh. this sucker this is a heavy haul truck what i want is this drop axle like this yeah. i've never seen the suspension before but look at that big old see it's got the big beam in between the airbags Big old gigantic axles. This would be a beast of a suspension. Completely take it down, sandblast it. Just replace all the airbags and all the stuff on it. What do you think? Would this be a good suspension for the cab over? Yeah. Yep. This would be something I'd like to put on the W9 or the Peterbilt. Because look. Then we'd have a drop axle. Oh. Definitely the W9. That would be stretch the W9 out and do this this frame. Yeah. Oh, dang guys, my mind is going crazy right now. Dump truck. Yep. Oh, we do need that for the dump truck, don't we? <laughs> Maybe we wouldn't have no weight problems. Oh, oh man. Uh, those are eight bags. I don't really want another. I don't want another eight bag. I'm really interested in this one though. I really think this is a good, pretty good find right here. Just because of that drop, that tag axle. Cut it right here at the cab. And then the, you could we could just use the yellow cab over to pull the RG in and then have that fifth axle or sixth axle Man, that sucks for this guy this was a, probably a sweet truck right here this thing was heavy duty dang look at the, they really did some engineering on this volvo look at that stack that is some engineering that freaking body kit on it toolboxes <laughs> I mean, this thing's pretty neat. Yeah, I like those lights like that too. And see how that one was on that white one? Yeah. Yep. So, all right, let's go look at some more trucks. No disc brakes. That's a pretty nice Cascadia right there. Both oh. yeah, these are drum brakes. But this would be a good cutoff just because of the. It's got new tires on it and everything. I wonder if this is a... So guys, see, they buy nice equipment. So you're not buying junk parts up here. They actually buy really nice equipment and then they pull these things apart and they sell all the parts off of them. Hoods, you got wheels and tires and you know, we got like they keep this custom stuff too, like these bumpers and stuff you can put on your trucks. There's old T2000. Man, that ram right there is nice. I wonder if we're junking that thing out. That's a sweet looking ram. Yep, got some headache racks, toolboxes. There's the classic hood. Ooh, big freight line eye. Wish I had a tag axle under it we could get. What is it, 400? Mm 
No, you're right. Yep, Cummins. 400 big cam. Look at the rear end houses. They got rear end houses for days. Oh, oh yeah, we gotta check that thing out. See how on these Max the axles are turned up like straight up? Yeah. And someone made a roller coaster and I was doing that. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. They put seats on it and while they go, it turns. Is that disc brakes here? Yeah. Mm, it might have been. I don't know. Probably was. No, it wasn't. Hey. Yeah. Alright, we gotta find us some disc brakes, Prax. We gotta find some disc brakes. I wanna just see how that goes. Alright, so I'm kinda stuck. I don't know if I should do a um, disc brake uh, cutoff or should I just go back to drum? Something that we know how to work on. But a lot of people say the disc brake stuff's easy. I don't know. I've not had no experience whatsoever with disc brakes. So, those of you guys that do have experience with disc brakes, please in the comments let me know am i making a mistake trying to go disc brakes or should i stick to the good old drums with brake pads because that's i mean i do know those pretty well hey this is an ice fld dang been sitting a while anyways uh yeah let me know what you think should i go disc brakes or should i go drum brakes there's w900 hoods there's an old W900 hood. Oh. That might still be a newer model. That's definitely a newer model hood there. Ooh, there's an old classic. No, that's not a classic. That's the FLD120 stand up. It makes me sick to see those in the junkyard. That's one of my favorite trucks is the stand up FLD. Yep, you can get fuel tanks here. Here's some of the new T680 hoods and stuff. Sleepers, they got some sleepers over here. Yep. We need to look for a Cascade. So a lot of the newer Cascadias had um, disc brakes. Oh, we may have found a tag axle for the dump truck. This is a steerable one too. Look, easy to mount. That's pretty simple, actually. I, I don't really need it to steer, but... I'm driving away. Fire it up. I'd crap if that thing just fired right after you hit that switch. Wow. Man. All right, there's got to be some disc brakes around here somewhere. Ooh. That one had a 12.7. Ooh, Coronado. We need some Coronado parts. We need some Coronado parts. Hey. Let's see what kind of suspension is under this thing. Hmm. I have a couple classics here. Yep. Oh, man, there's another darn FLD right there, stand up truck. Two of them. Oh, there's our brackets we need. We need to get those off while we're here. Oh, yeah, For the uh, classic. Yeah. Hey, this is a nice truck. Oh, man, them are riveted in. It does. The frame matches. Yeah. Ours wasn't riveted. Ours was bolted in. All right, guys, we found some brackets for our visor for the Classic. So that's awesome. I bet it is because it's already got a visor on it. I wonder if it's damaged, though. The visor is. Oh, now I can see how ours mounts. That's how it's supposed to mount. We need the, yeah, this is the one we need to get them off of right here. That's the same visor. Wow. A little bit different, but it's pretty much the same. Sure. Yep. Yep. So that's the brackets we need, Brax. Is off this one right here. Yeah. This guy had a bad day. 
Looks like he jackknifed the crap out of it or rolled it or something. Yep, he definitely had a bad day on this deal. Does it have a headache crack? Oh yeah, that is a pretty nice one. Door. Yeah, I'd like to have that same headache rack, but in really good shape. Hey, it's my bird. Yeah. Oh, I could live here. I could be here all day. I'm telling you. If it wasn't 105 degrees out, I definitely want to be here all day. Yeah. And then we got some T2000s. Um, yep. You got Western Stars, T2000s, Internationals. You got Internationals. There's all kinds of different oh, trucks up here. Bunch of newer International. Um, I've actually got a couple of those trucks there, like that maroon one. This one's rough. Yeah, he really had a bad day. That's my worst nightmare is a truck burning up. I'd hate yeah. for that to happen. Let's see, we got T2000s, there's an old pilot truck, Crete truck. Man, an old rider truck. Is that a 379 sitting up there? Yep. No, it's a Freightliner. Hey, that would have been a nice fixer upper. Let's yeah. go up here and see what's up here. I ain't never come up here before. I think I've been like right here. There's a 9900. There is a frame. It's cut in half, though. Ooh, look at all this. Oh, here's all the cutoffs. Here's a nice cutoff. Cutoffs for days. Yep. Dang, guys, look at this place. Look at all these trucks. Here's all the radiators. Look at all the radiators. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty horrible, actually. A lot of radiators, intercoolers. Looks like they sell them. So usually they sell them with like the whole pack, but I do see some separated. I will say that's been very helpful for our company in many, many situations. Like we need a radiator or an air to air or something. We just come up here and buy the whole thing for what you can buy a new one for. And you got new air to air, radiator, intercooler, or the air to air, radiator, and the AC condenser. A lot of times you can find a really good one up here. Oh, yeah, that was bad wreck, wasn't it? Yeah. Really bad wreck. Does it? Guys, here's all the others. There's more international. There's a bunch of internationals. There's just a tag axle Brax. Yeah, that's a pretty good looking truck. Automatic though, no man clutch. All right, let's look at this tag axle real quick. Yep, there's another tag axle. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably never even use it, but if you have it on there, then you can load the weight. Yeah. Maybe I should just weld some wheels in place to make it look like it's got a tag axle. Because every dump truck I've seen come in and out of there, they never have it up and down. Oh! oh. Good spot, Brax, even though it's missing the rear end. Hoo oh. <laughs> hoo Old freight, oh, look at that dash. We need that dash for the single axle truck. That whole gauge, small big gauge. 
Hey, we need to uh, get up and bring some parts off this thing. It's a nice looking inside. Yeah, it is. Same color as their uh, yellow truck's interior. Yeah. There's our panels. Man, I'm glad you spotted that. I love junkyard days. This is my favorite days. Tim loves junk. There's no doubt about that. There's some International Pro Star hoods. The Pro Stars, I've got a few of them. If you guys are looking for any Pro Star parts, definitely hit me up. I've got a Pro Star truck that is super nice. Like 500,000 miles on it. It's got an ISX in it. And you know, you know how I feel about an ISX. So I just parked the dang thing. But it's got a brand new Signature 600 in it. It just needs to be hooked up. I'd sell that truck for like 10 grand right now. That blue one, that's a super nice truck, ain't it? Yeah, it's neat. It's hooked up. Hooked the motor up, and that thing's ready to go to work. This one is really bad, They do buy some really good equipment here, I will say that. Some more Cascadias. There's the disc brake truck. It's a Mac, but... That'd be a cool setup. Big tall fifth wheel. Yep. So you wanna go show them all the motors? So you guys, if you need like tanks, coolant tanks, just little things, even for your, like if you got brake issues, you need uh, anything. Hubs. Oh no, I don't know if we can be here now. I can't stand to see an FLD tore down like that. Some more motors. No, I can't, I can't be a part of this. I can't be a part of this, Brax. Look, that's the same stack setup as on the cab over. Identical. Yep. Oh, that's air rod. Pretty slick interior, though. Found us some interior parts we need. Are you keeping all this in your head? All the parts that we found, we got to come up here and get. Hey, I like this bottom. I'm all Oh, like scaling. That's the dash we need right there. Them panels. Yeah. We're getting every single one of those and putting them up. A lot of good interior parts on this truck. Yeah. How about you? Out. Put that in our stock. We need that for our junk stock. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just buy this whole truck. Yeah. I do like that visor. Me too. I do like the visor. Ah, right, let's look at some motors. Crankshafts. Cat heads. Let's see, what do we got over here today? It's like we got a. Uh, you know them very old. I think this is like an old NTC or something. 350. Yeah, it looks like a 350. It's halfway 350. But okay. Jake's. What is this and one? 127. Yeah. Yep. You never run out of oh, they got a bunch of them, don't they? Fans, they keep steering wheels, everything. It's a lot of a lot of stuff up here.
Big cam. That's a 400 there. There's another big cam. DD. Is that a Volvo? It's a DD, ain't it? Yeah. Okay. 2012. Yeah. 12 5 exchange with 340,000 miles for DD 15. Got a lot of coming stuff up here, huh? Oh my goodness, what is this? That's a 6V. Silver Series, turboed. I'd like to fire this thing up. That's what's in the Air Force truck, identical. There's a C10. Like an old 7.3 or something over here. Yeah. That's a DT-466 probably. Gears for days. There's an M11. ISX, Cat, ISX, Volvo. No, that's international, DT-466. ISX. There's an A-cert motor. Oh, that come out of that 387 Pete that's out there. 09 model. How much? $8,500 exchange, 450 horse. June of 09. That's actually not a bad price. Oh, there's, there's an old 12 valve. 5 9 Cummins. I don't see the price on it. Yeah, these are five nines. Oh, this is tight. Here's a 24 valve. How much is on the 24 valve? Two thousand model less than five hundred thousand, forty five hundred exchange. When you put this in that doodle bug. Doodle bug. Eight point three Cummins. No price. DT 466, $6,500 exchange. Not a bad price either. All right, and then here we've got all of our chunks. All of our chunks. Yeah. All right, guys, so we're back here in the transmission. I guess we'll call this transmission department. Yeah, my <laughs> transmission department. So Nate went to school. Me and him both at the same time started rebuilding transmissions. He's definitely surpassed me. <laughs> I mean, it was literally the same time, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, because I was going to come up here and do them with you. Yep, and so that was right before I started YouTube, and I went YouTube route, he went transmission route, and he surpassed the crap out of me. So he's building like, how many do you think you built now? Like a couple hundred? Yeah, a couple hundred. About, it took me two days to do one, so one every two days. That's not bad though. That's no. I mean, one day to tear it down, one day to build it back. So we got a whole room over here full of transmissions. So guys, if you need 18 speeds, 13 speeds, 10 speeds, um, I mean, yeah, 8 LLs, 15s, whatever. He does them all. So reman transmissions you can get here. Uh, a lot of the rear ends they get, like I said, you've seen the trucks that are outside. A lot of them they buy really good equipment to part out it ain't like you're just buying junk to part out you actually buy really nice trucks to part oh, out yeah. i don't hardly have trouble out of rear ends at all so and a lot of our actually all of our rear ends come from here every single time we probably don't have a truck that don't have a john story rear end under it because i mean we'll take the big gears out and put lower gears in them usually we buy 342s and 336s <laughs> lord knows we appreciate that so is this one that just got done use one yeah. so um guys if you need a transmission motors we've got um 
Looks like people have been buying a crap house of motors. Motors are crazy right now. Well, parts. Can't buy parts to build them. So right. Used right. motors are going nuts. So, a lot of motor stuff. Uh, I guess we can show them the new transmissions. Yeah. So, what Nate's needing right now, like I said in the beginning of the video, is Nate's needing some employees. Yes. <laughs> Bring me some help, please. <laughs> and like, it's clean here. This is not like working at any other junkyard you're gonna go work at. A lot of people shy away from it when you say work at a, I mean, it's a salvage yard. Yeah, but I try to take care of my, I work more of a family, man. I'll try yeah. to take care of people. I want them to stay. I don't, I don't want people to run off on me. Exactly. And this place, like the whole family thing about it is when I started coming here to get parts, guys, it's when I had a piece of crap, 377 Peterbilt, they use five gallons of oil a week. And without this junkyard, or this salvage yard, I would not have got through this. I mean, you guys have helped me out. That's awesome. I will say how I got here today is a lot to do with this salvage yard. I would come in and, you know, John, don't, he didn't like doing it, but I would con him in to, <laughs> I'm like, John, I get paid next week. Yeah. And uh, God, he hated that, but he helped me get through a well, lot I've, of- I've seen him do it with a hundred people, man. I mean, he, he has, really does try to help people. He out. does. He. he and then like, it wasn't just uh, like, he would personally call me and say, hey, how are you doing this week? You know, how's your trucks doing? You need any parts? And now that we've done the YouTube thing up here and you know, they've, y'all have exploded in the last couple oh, of years. Yeah, it's been crazy. And the way the world's going, cause you, you know, it's hard to buy new trucks, but here we got a shelf of- Yeah, everything blue's a reman. Everything blue's a reman. So we got RTLO, that's an 18.9. 18 that's a high dollar unit that's still a good price though yeah that's with the core that's with the core um so you got 18 speeds you got 13 speeds yeah, 10 speed, 10 speed, 13 speed. 8 ols but those are wellers those right. are used uh, more 13 speeds water cooled fros um, so what's the deal with this right here it's just a forced oil ring. Uh, I mean, the old ones didn't have them. More oil can't hurt, but it ain't gonna kill you to take it out of there. Okay, so I just took it out of mine. It ain't gonna hurt. Okay. Do you have to have a bell housing to match that, or? If it's on there, you do, yeah. yeah. Okay, that was my issue. I didn't yeah. I couldn't. I didn't have room for it. Yeah, now Eaton makes plug kits for them for like 40 bucks, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's what I've done. I just plugged mine off, and then. It ain't gonna hurt it, no. Yep. So guys, we'll be putting uh, probably one of, I don't know if we're gonna go with a 13 yet or an 18, but the yellow cab over is probably gonna, I'm gonna probably say an 18. So this is gonna be a heavy haul truck, pulling RGN and stuff like that. It's probably gonna get an 18 speed. So uh, don't call up here and buy my transmission. <laughs> uh, what is this one, is it 18? Uh, no, 13? Yeah, oh yeah, that's an oldie. Oh, you got a few 18s. I got a couple of them, yeah. Yep. Well, save me one. All right. I'm going to need one of those. I got to get my bucks up, though. But, guys, uh, if you are looking for a job and if you're around Knoxville, I mean, I guess Crosspoint ain't too far away. I mean, it'd be a drive, but. Yeah. Um, that Parlin's from uh, Granger County drives 40 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, if you're looking for a good job, Nate pays good. Um, yeah, I'll take care of it. I, I believe that for sure. If I didn't. If I didn't have a YouTube job in a trucking company, I would be up here working. <laughs> Just because I would enjoy working on the trucks, but I'd probably be rebuilding trucks instead of salvaging them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd be buying parts while you're up here working. <laughs> I wouldn't get no check. I would get, I'd be broke every week. <laughs> but, so guys, that's going to finish off today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to show you kind of what we had going on up here so that you can see all their parts and all the trucks that they got. They've got a lot of modern stuff. they got some older stuff. And I hadn't done a video up here in a while. And we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff here actually here in the next few months. With us going full-time YouTube and you're gonna be working on all these trucks all the time, it's gonna be, a lot of our parts come from here. And I'll be doing a lot of the parts runs and coming up here and pulling parts. And we're gonna be getting a lot of stuff from here. So I'm telling you right now, reach out. Nate, John, all of them will take good care of you. And just tell them I sent you, and I'm sure they will take really, really good care of you. And uh, what's the number up here, Nate? 865-525-9899. There you go. So, 9899, guys. I'll put that down in the comments below. But me and Brax is going to get back to the house. We've got to go work on some trucks. we got a list of parts that we need. 
and we're going to get back up here on monday and pick all those parts up holy crap so this trailer right here it's for sale somebody stretched it you can see where somebody stretched it but they're wanting i think you said fifteen thousand for this rgn that's a really good price for an rgn guys just to work an rgn something for the farm or something that's a good price you got good tires on it air ride you got lots of stuff i mean it'd be a good farm trailer anyway or a good starter trailer for somebody that wants to get in some heavy hauling uh he did say fifteen thousand on this um that cascadia is actually got a brand new motor in it the white one there i talked to him about it and um i think he wants forty thousand for it 35 or 40 with uh it does have a he's actually looking at it now i guess there's a box or something that it needs something to do with the uh, regen on it they rebuilt the motor and then something went wrong with the emissions which is on back order so a lot of people are selling those trucks over that